There's been mud on my soul. There's been anger inside me. There's still unforgiven deeds that now it's time to free. I've been trapped inside so long. Don't remember how to live. How much of life has passed me by as I slept inside my dreams. Oh yes, sip the waters too. Let them wash all over you. in the path of spirituality the first is self consciousness and second self unconsciousness in self consciousness self remembering happens and in self unconsciousness self forgetfulness happens self remembering and self forgetfulness the moment we forget ourselves the darkness comes in the thinking is muddled up the vision becomes hazy and the moment we enter the stage of self remembering things start clearing up the fog is removed the mist disappears everything becomes conspicuous when we are in the state of self unconsciousness we enter into something what is known as chain reaction with others chain reactions we create new karmic accounts they say that every karma has got result and every karma will search out its karta just as children of animal somehow or other search their parents in the similar manner every karma will serve the karma or the action doer so result cannot be avoided so whatever is the result you will have to undergo the pain agony or the pleasure or happiness depending upon the karma when we are in the stage of self unconsciousness we are away from our very nature very self and on that periphery we are attracted towards other circles other souls but not to the center attracted to their periphery and we enter into a chain reaction chain reaction of attachment or aversion if somebody loves you 
you get attracted if somebody gives you pleasure you get attracted if somebody doesn't speak good he gives pain we get repulsed so they are just these two things rag and dvesh rag is attachment dvesh is repulsion is dislike is aversion so in fact these are the only two vices and because of these two vices we enter into that chain reaction and every reaction will have result positive negative positive negative and the state of the mind will keep on fluctuating our mind has got that tendency to get attached to everything which is pleasurable and our mind has tendency to withdraw itself from all those things which give pain discomfort we feel like to be with those people who love us who praise us but we feel like to go away from those people who are critics who are opposers who don't agree with us the goal of spirituality is equanimity the goal of spirituality is to attain that equipoise state of consciousness sthita prakya yogi where one is sthit one is situated in prakya prakya is the highest form of knowledge something even higher than wisdom which doesn't come from books nor even from experiences of life but from something higher when the consciousness goes away from this material world when the matter and the mud consciousness is dropped down and the spirit rises up then we are freed from that chain reaction of attachment of repulsion in murlis we often hear one phrase one saying bachu balsha and piru wazir is anybody aware of who are these guys even i was not knowing till yesterday i had to do an intense search to find out who they are because it's not mentioned anywhere at least in indian literature it's only in sin the literature of pakistan that some references are found so what does it mean bhai bachu badsha baba means lust and piru wazir baba means anger so lust and anger are closely knit with each other lust is desire the desire could be for anything the desire for sensual pleasure the desire for power the lust for food the lust for wandering anything anger in one of the bhagavad gita shloka it is mentioned that lust gives rise to anger lust gives rise to anger they are your all devouring enemy if the lust is not fulfilled the result is anger so whoever comes in the path of lust appears to be an enemy the force of lust is intense mahavairi bhagavad gita describes them as the great enemies so whenever we are told to conquer lust and anger we start working on persons this is me and this are this is a person so we try to remove them avoid them go away from them or destroy them but this approach never is never successful then what is the way out we are sensual beings we have senses 
this object and these are the senses the object strikes the mind the object strikes the mind or senses first and something is created in the body we call them sensations now there are two types of sensations pleasant unpleasant if the sensations are present we love that if the sensations are unpleasant we want to avoid that now if this object of this stimuli if this thing which is striking here it is pleasurable we get addicted to it and a pleasurable senses a sensation is created all over the body if this object is not to our liking unpleasant sensations are created in the body for example if somebody insults you what happens we develop some sensations in the body if somebody praises then some sensations are produced somebody is a school child she has learned a poem or a song and she comes on the stage to recites the poetry she recites it half way and there are there is an applause clapping and she forgets the rest of the poetry why because that applause that clapping overwhelms us her so the pure the sensations of overwhelming happiness are created and she is drowned in them she gets attached and she forgets the matter so also when one is opposed criticized some unpleasant sensations are created so we feel like to go away from that person from that object but this is not the path the path is something else if we can observe this sensation as detached observer whether they are pleasant or unpleasant and keep our mind equanimous stable automatically nothing will affect us because every sensation is passing away it is not staying it is impermanent anitya it is not staying there so i don't work on others i start working on myself so the anger management starts within me the anger management is to go within and observe what is happening what's happening in the hand what's happening in the legs what's happening in the chest what's happening in the ears eyes mouth face in the stage of excitement every muscle gets stretched and if you can see that stretched muscle as a detached observer you will have calmness soul and body are interlinked interconnected intermarried with each other interlinked interconnected and intermarried with each other if something happens to the soul the result would be reflected on body and if body is affected soul cannot remain untouched so if something is getting created on the body and the body is getting stretched excited and if you can see that sensation as a detached observer automatically these sensations would calm down and as a result the mind would become calm so let's move into the story it's a tough story in order to understand these two guys they were two bandits two outlaws we need to understand the history of sindh once upon a time there was something called hoor community they were good people the entry of uh, in maybe in 12th or 13th century the saints sufi saints they entered sindh and later on during the british rule 
there were lot of atrocities and tyranny so tyrants were produced and in that coming you know, a peer pagaro or something like that so they were known as peers and all those saints but they were divided into two groups the one of the groups was devoted to prayer devotion to god but another group was a group of salafis they were like jihads and that second group become became rebels they rose in rebellion against british and lot of fights in fact british passed an law hur act and they said that all these hur people they are anti religious but they were extreme religion extreme religiousness whatever you call it they were like uh, local robin hoods the villagers used to support them but the government was against them but then gradually there were murders and deaths because this second group of hur community they were very ferocious and they killed many police officers zamindars all the high officials whosoever they thought are against them they killed them and one of the two outlaws out of the many outlaws the two were this bachu badsha was one of them and his assistant piru wazir but later on as the literature says they were caught and killed they were caught and killed especially this first round 1895 the story is of 1895 the peer was pressurized so much by the commissioner in sind and the deputy commissioner that he announced to take the hoors back into spiritual blessing if they cooperated with the police he also declared that all outlaws under the land of badsha and his wazir must surrender to the authorities so government said that you must surrender otherwise subsequent to this the peer's chief khalifa by the name of hajao nawazio was murdered by hoors in april 18, 1896 now this was the date 1896 piru wazir sent a defiant message to say where he could be found in the maki khand the place was surrendered by the men of the baluch regiment and police and piru wazir with his two companions were killed in the encounter which followed so police surrounded the place where this piru wazir was there and ultimately he was killed so this was first and second his other companion bachu badsha ultimately he surrendered to khan bahadur mohammed yakub lucas deputy however it was decided to hang him this was done under the supervision of edmund cox the superintendent police of tharparkar tharparkar is one of the places there in sindh they were hanged at the village of sanghar near the scene of the crimes that they committed or fortunately the administration resorted to the profane technique by burying them under the public road because there was a fear that if some rebel was killed other followers they would try to make some temple there or some place of worship so what they did they killed this bachu badsha and he was buried in the inside the road where people would keep on walking so no monument should be created so these are the two robin hoods but as it is said they resorted to extremism they became extremist they killed many officers and ultimately they both were killed so baba says this lust is bachu bad and this anger is his assistant they are very very dangerous they can kill anyone hmm so you cannot say that 
I have conquered them. The moment you say that I have conquered vices, they take the upper hold of you. The moment you say that, now I have, I am totally viceless. The vices are very subtle. The moment we indulge in any pleasure, a file is created in the computer of the mind. A file, okay? A desire arose in the mind and you try the desire of lust. The lustful desire rises in the mind and you try to fulfill that desire not in person but only in the imagination. A file is created. The time period is just 10 minutes but file is created. And then there are so many other files of Seva and Purshat and Amritvela and you are churning and so many other things. So this file gets submerged. But the moment a trigger comes, the file is opened. So all your Gyan Yoga, suppose this is an ocean, so a new path is created inside the ocean, through the ocean. And everything is moved on this side. And the file comes to the fore, on the surface. The file is dangerous. And we all have created so many files. The folders are there. Folders of lust and folders of anger. Folders of past lust and past angers. They just need a fillip, a trigger. And the file opens. And once the file opens, memories gush in. They overwhelm you. And that moment drowns you down. You are lost. So what to do? And what is the method of management? First I said, observe the sensations with detached mind. So even if there are no desires or lustful thoughts. Still, still one should make a deep journey within one's mind. To take a stock of this storeroom. Because it is filled with many files. The files have become corrupt. And they don't allow the system to operate properly. They are hidden viruses. And sometimes you need formatting. The play is happening in the subconscious mind. You cannot directly reach. To access subconscious mind is one of the most difficult things. Because it is so deep. At present nothing is there. Everything is fine. Mind is filled with pure thoughts. But the purity is on the surface. There is impurity below. There are three levels. The first level is a level of purity. But behind, below the level of purity is impurity. But below the level of impurity there is again purity which is the very nature of the soul. The journey is from purity to impurity and from impurity again towards purity. The circle is like that. So don't get happy with the surface purity. This is just the surface. Below that surface, deep hidden in the subconscious, be deep, deeply hidden, is that impurity. And this impurity is the result of the past indulgences in lust, in anger. The folders are there that they have yet not been destroyed. So the journey is journey from light to darkness and from darkness again to light. But if you want to lead that perm reach that permanent light, you will have to go once through that darkness. Without passing through that darkness of deep internal desires, you cannot reach that perennial, that eternal, that everlasting purity, which is my very nature. So the journey of purity starts from purity to impurity and from impurity to impurity. So first, don't get swelled up. That we have become extremely pure. The purity is hidden there. 
like thieves in ambush, waiting to attack you unawares. Like these two, Bachchu Bacha and Piru Wazir. They were outlaws, they were bandits, they were robbers, they used to kill, they used to loot. All those foreigners, all those Britishers, all those who were rich, they would take money from them and distribute to the poor. In one way they were good, but they were not following the law of land. That's why they were punished. Om Shanti.